Okay, boom. Now, we are looking at the euro dollar, right? Um, if you guys remember, I've always, well, not always, but I have been short um, on the euro dollar for quite some time. I'm looking at the daily on it, and from at first glance, right, using just our basic tools, um, the, the moving averages, we can see obviously that it is in a downward trend. Okay, so we basically have a downward trend in market, right? You can see there's a lot of space on the downside for it to come through too. And therefore, we're predominantly looking at shorting opportunities. Okay, we want to be trading with the trend most of the time, right? Especially if you're talking about um, um, downward momentum. And with that being said, we're looking for opportunities or pullbacks right into those nice areas that we like to look at. Okay, so on the four hour, um, if we drop on the four hour, we see some movement at around that 1400 level and that swing high, right, which was almost breached at 1450. Okay, see those two levels over there, this one and this one. And we see a very significant one as well, 13 even, 130 even. I think previously it had played a major support level. Okay, 13 even, let's check. Um, yeah, it actually did. And you can see the market just played around there for quite some time, came a resistance, boom, pushed down, and the market came back, broke about 13 even, okay? Then through to 1350, and then hit that 1400 level, and the market is looking poised for a downward continuation of the move. Right now, I'd like to see the market pull back into that 1300 zone. Okay, 1300. See there, um, we've got an EMA out as well within that vicinity, and it does look like a decent enough pullback for us to for it to actually draw some attention towards it. And I think the move about 40 42 pips at most and definitely worth the short okay so around 1300 i would be looking at um shorting opportunity it will depend for me obviously on uh one factor okay how the candle closes around that 1300 okay so if we have a nice pin bar um doji or reversal type candle around the 1300 level then i'd love to see the market pull up a bit and then down to these lower levels right ambitiously i've been looking for 111 okay i've been we came dangerously close um i think it was in may we came dangerously close to that 111 i definitely think within the next few months um we're going to be breaking that and once that 1100 level breaks i believe we are looking at like a huge move to um, parity at least on the on the euro USD. Okay, parity basically means for one dollar you get one euro. Okay, so that's way down here. That's way down here. It's way down. It's been a while since that has happened. Okay, like I said, it's extremely ambitious. Extremely ambitious. Okay, now mind you, this is a daily time frame. Okay, now. I've also analyzed the EuroCAD. Well, we were checking out the EuroCAD. And if we look on the weekly, on the weekly we have this significant level, which is at 4,800. And the mark came in with a full bodied um, one weekly candle, boom, broke it, and also broke that 4,700 um, handle as well. And tagged 46 with here and just sort of like moved up to, I think it's 47.50. Okay, so there's been a lot of action. Okay, um, if you were a short term trader, you would have definitely had some scalping opportunities there. But we see that definitely it's been broken and we're anticipating a continuation of the move to the downside. I would have loved to see the market come back to around 149, right? 149, 148.50. That would definitely be an area that I'd be looking to short at heavily if we do get the reversal, okay. But looking at um, the way that the market has been sort of like sliding away to the downside, it doesn't look likely anytime soon. Right, so let's see what happens. Let's um, just take our time and just wait for this one to develop, All right? So um, key angle, I think for me is 48, All right guys.
Right, so we are looking at the GBP care on a daily time frame, boom, right? And also, it's been predominantly down. And we, I mean, if you're looking at uh, most recent support levels or previous support levels, rather, aside from this 6400, there's nothing really up until I think one six even. Okay, one six even and one five nine even. That's where we see any significant support level. So I am short on the GBP cat. Um, I'm not sure if any, any of you guys know that. Um, but we did talk about two trades uh, before we actually took them. It was a GBP cat as well as the Euro GPY. And I've been short, I think, from 6400. Okay, 6400. And it's probably a 80 plus pips or so. So I'm just holding on to that one. I haven't broken even or anything on that one. If we get to 6300, that's about 100 pips. So I'll be willing, willing to let that one go. And I think we're almost out on the Euro JPY. Yeah, I think we're definitely out on the Euro JPY. Um, our take profit was at 43, 21.43. Yeah, so we're definitely out on that one. And entry was okay. Entry on this one was a bit more advanced. I think it was somewhere between 20, 22, 20, but it was somewhere around here. Okay, I'll send through the, the chart, but I think I did post that in the WhatsApp group. I did post that in the WhatsApp group, so you guys can just go back and check that. Okay, now. We can see a bit of sideways movement, sideways consolidation. Okay, so what we're probably going to get during the course of this week could be a pullback to the upside. We tested this 6400 level, right, 164, and a bounce of this uh, 200 moving average on the one hour time frame. That would be really sort of like ice cold to complete the setup. And if we do achieve that, if we do get that, we definitely poised for a continuation of the move to the downside. That's why I haven't broken even. I'm already short, I'm up like 60, 70 pips, um, along with some of the guys, and we're not breaking even. So if it does pull back again, well, it might add like another order in, the, in anticipation of the move to the downside, okay? But it does look poised for a downward trade. I mean, you don't want to be buying in a market like this. You want to be a seller, and therefore I'm keeping my position of being a, um, like as a predominantly short one as well. Right now, the Australian USD, um, we've been missing out on this one. It's just been like this way and then that way. So it's just been a bit tricky for, for, for us to actually trade. But if we're looking at the weekly, or if we break down from the weekly, um, we can see a nice downward trend as well as the daily. And the EMA is firmly above the actual market price. All right, so the market price is firmly below the moving averages, although we do see a bit of a retracement. Okay, could be a trend directional change. It could be a bit of a retracement. But if you're looking at the highs, okay, if you're spotting these highs over here, they're sort of making these higher highs, but they haven't broken any significant level that I'd like to see broken. I'd like to see a significant level being broken at let's go to the daily um 7200 the market could break 7200 that would be nice okay if it would break 7300 that would be nice as well but for me i'm still long term short on the australian dollar us dollar i would love to see a rise to 7100 definitely looking at a short run that area and then a continuation of the move to the downside because even structurally we do see this um, 7100 level as uh, a previous you know, stronghold, basically. Okay, but so definitely. So, if you guys are looking for for, for opportunities there, um, I would say I think yeah, 7100, 7100 definitely worth taking a look. And Euro JPY, Euro JPY, okay, 
as you guys already know, I am short by some unit of Y. I'm hoping for 121 even. Okay, long run, 121 even. And on the four hour time frame, we were short, um, I think in 2220. The market came back again, right? And if you broke even, okay, I'm pretty sure some of you guys remember me talking about this. Uh, some people wanted to break even on this trade. And I did mention that it is a vital, vital newbie mistake to break even just because you feel like the market is going to take back profit. Now, if you did break even, you can see the market came in and tagged your break even stop loss and then continued in your direction anyway. So while you were out, we came in and closed out on. This is probably close to 100. Okay, it's like 78 pips on this one. Right. Now, for the guys who are still holding, uh, target would definitely be 2100. Okay, and we can mark it off. 121, that would be the get out point. That is about, um, you don't have to break even as well, like 48 pips or so. If you don't want to, you don't have to break even because there could be another pullback to this 22 even, right? So around 2200, that's where the market could pull back to. Right, and we see the GBP USD. Um, guys know GBP USD um, for this year, I have been short. For last year, I was long, like predominantly the entire year. Was it last year? No, 2017. Okay. Um, 2017 was basically long from February, and since the last year, Feb, it's been on a very, very steep decline. And if you break down to that daily time frame, you can see structurally the market is looking poised for a, another push to the downside. Okay, so if you're trading that um, on the long side, just be careful. Now, if you Go to that four hour, we see a nice swing high at 27.50 and soon low at 24.50 and the market is hovering around 25 even. Okay, I'd love to see the market run up to 2600 at least or even better 26.50 before the continuation of the move to the downside. You can see we have our 200 EMA as well, right firmly below is uh, market action and the moving average is just above and therefore we'd like to see that tag of that 2600 level and also probably a tag of the 200 EMA as well which would give us a much more I can say solid um, buy so that would be the plan for the week I think this is about I don't know it's quite a jump about 70 Nine seventy-eight pips. Okay, rise first, and then um, in anticipation of that drop to the downside. Okay, um, definitely wouldn't be doing anything right now because I mean, it doesn't look like it's doing much um, for the past I mean, two days or three days. So we'd be waiting for a clear signal on that one, and I do believe there are people short on the GBP JPY. Um, I did mention this one in the group, um, the trading room, but I didn't actually take it myself. Yeah, no, some guys took it. <laughs> but the only thing that I didn't like is that I had the Euro JPY on short and um, it was pretty, you can say large for, for, for a particular account. And I didn't want to well, like have similar um, trades because obviously if it didn't work out, it was going to be so like double the amount of pain that I was actually going to get. So you don't want to do that. Um, you don't want markets that are directly correlated, traded as like independent markets. So if you're going to correlate, you'd rather take your 1% risk, if you're risking 1% or 3%, and just split it up in one and a half for each particular market. Okay. So that's how you'd like to set up the set it up. But you can see on the four hour, We've been having these nice swing highs and structurally the 36 even level was a really decent level for short-term opportunities. You can see it was a previous support structure. And as I've mentioned already, it's been down the trend, right? So things like some two or three months back. 
we've been having this downward type of momentum. All right, now going back to the four hour time frame, we haven't had much of a pullback on this one. Okay, but if you do check on the four hour, on four hour, take the swing low through to the swing high rather here to the swing low, the market exactly tagged that 50% Fibonacci retracement. And you had your EMA as well. Okay, so you had your EMA there. The 200 moving average at 36 even. And yeah, the market did actually pay out, right? I think it was about 100 pips. It should be 100 pips, yes. And now we would be anticipating some sort of a trend reversal or pullback rather, pullback into, I can say if you want to go, if you have to go somewhere, if you have to have a position 3550, but I'd much rather wait for a 3600 tab. Okay, I'd rather see the market coming at 3600, just above the 200 EMA, right? Clean highs. Clean eyes here, boom, and therefore we have a nice actual setup for the All right, So that's quite a distance, 100 pips. If you can't wait, um, probably have that 35.50 with the backup order probably around 3600. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, guys, with me. We don't seem to be getting a lot of questions today. Well, I haven't gotten one question. All right. All right, so as I said, guys, this was basically just analysis, okay? So this was us looking at the market, sort of like planning um, for the week, how we, we will be looking to trade. Um, what markets are warm, look, warm, hot, you know, cold. And now what we're going to be doing is taking the time to study the markets that are sort of like warm and hot. Okay. So if you want recording, I think I have recorded this one. I'll upload it and then send through the link in the WhatsApp group. And yeah, if you're not in the WhatsApp group, I think there's a few people that are not in it. Um, okay, I mean the time frame. If you're going to be using a penny order, the time frame really is relevant on the way you actually take the trade. Um, the time frame is more important for when you're looking at uh, or when you're doing your analysis. Rather, that's right? so when you look doing your analysis. The time frame is imperative. It's important. But if you're just um, talking about actual trade setups and which time frame is the best, I mean. It really doesn't matter, right? But you don't want to use too small a time frame, five minutes, 15 minutes. I mean, that's that's a bit of a stretch if you're gonna be swing trading. Right? If you're scalping short term, then 15 minutes, 30 minutes and one hour. But if you wanna be a swing or position trader, um, you probably start at four hour through to your weekly or your daily. Yeah. And since I use a bit of both, I probably use way more time frames than the average person. All right. All right, guys, any other questions? All right, so if there are no other questions right now, I will be ending tonight's session. All right, um, we're gonna have a normal, so like trading session or training session rather. Um, I'll announce the, the times and the dates for this week uh, in the whatsapp group and yeah hope everyone enjoyed the session and let's make it a really good trading week ladies and gents all right cheers